Mr. Speaker, Representative Tlaib has repeatedly made atrocious statements against our ally Israel and in support of Hamas, a terrorist group responsible for the largest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. Representative Tlaib has levied unbelievable falsehoods about our greatest ally Israel and the attack on October 7th. Recently, she even falsely blamed them for bombing the Al Ali Arab Hospital, which all our current intelligence shows that Israel was not responsible. As stated in my res resolution on November 3rd, Representative Tlaib said, from the river to the sea is an aspirational call for freedom, human rights, and peaceful coexistence, not death, destruction, or hate. The gentleman will My work and the gentleman will suspend. is always centered in justice the, and dignity. The gentleman will suspend. The House is not in order. The gentleman deserves to be heard. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. My work and advocacy is always centered in justice and dignity for all people, no matter what faith or ethnicity. Mr. Speaker, let me be, break down the saying, from the river to the sea. The river is the Jordan River, and the sea is the Mediterranean. This is a call for the complete destruction of Israel. It's disgusting when it's used in its context that it was meant. Representative Tlaib boycotted Israeli President Herzog's address to Congress, releasing a joint statement with Representative Bush. That said, bestowing President Herzog with the rare honor of a joint address to Congress while the Israeli apartheid government continues to enable and directly support racism and brutal settler attacks is a slap in the face to victims, survivors, and their loved ones. This kind of hatred against our ally Israel is unacceptable. Israel has a right to exist. For thousands of years, the Jewish people resided in that land and after being displaced for centuries, returned in 1948 after the Holocaust. Mr. Speaker, we've seen the effects of the reprehensible rhetoric of Representative Tlaib across the nation. At the schools and colleges around the country, Jewish students have been forced to be on alert as their anti-Semitic peers have engaged in disgusting demonstrations, chanting anti-Semitic slogans. At Cooper Union, a private college in New York, Jewish students were forced to hide from pro-Hamas protesters in a library where they feared for their safety. At George Washington University, just about a half mile from this building, students broadcast, glory to our martyrs, and free Palestinian from river to the sea on the side of the campus building. Further, yesterday in Ventura County, California, Paul Kessler, a Jewish man protesting for Israel, was killed as an altercation with pro-Palestinian protesters. These anti-Semitic incidents are happening right now in America in 2023, and quite frankly, in my entire lifetime, I've never seen anything like it. The same nation that defended Nazism in World War II must now defeat an internal rot promoting the same senseless violence and hatred of Jewish people. It is a sad fact, but this type of anti-Semitic hate is being promoted by a small group of members in this body, chiefly Representative Tlaib. We must hold her accountable. This war in Israel is affecting everyone, whether it's innocent Palestinians at risk because of Hamas's actions or our fellow Jewish Americans who now have to worry each day about the possibility of an anti-Semitic attack. Or Sergeant Elishva Rose Ida Lubin, a young Jewish woman who was a member of the Israeli Builder Police and grew up in Dunwoody, Georgia, who was killed by a Palestinian assailant. For the safety and security of our nation, we must continue to support Israel, a nation fighting for democracy, decency, and Western values. Representative Tlaib has undermined U.S. interests with their statements and must be censured. With that, I reserve. Gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Raskin, is recognized. Mr. Speaker, thank you. I have images of three politicians in my office, Abraham Lincoln, Robert F. Kennedy, and Samuel F. Bellman, who was the first Jewish person ever elected to the Minnesota legislature, a great champion of civil rights and civil liberties in the Constitution and of the creation of the State of Israel, the Jewish democratic state in 1948. And he was my grandfather. He was elected at a time of terrible anti-Semitism, not unlike today. Minneapolis was actually called the anti-Semitism capital of America. And my grandpa told me a story I'll never forget. 
The Democratic Farm Labor Party and Republican caucuses both had their annual retreats at a country club that did not allow Jews or blacks to enter. My grandfather complained privately to the speaker about the fact he wouldn't be able to go to his own retreat, and the speaker apologized but said that it was a tradition. So my grandfather, the only Jewish person in the chamber, spoke on the floor about anti-Semitism, and he was booed and jeered at, and members left as he tried to speak. When the minority leader asked me to manage our time today, I thought about my grandfather and how he must have felt on that day. So I rise here not in spite of the fact that I am a Jewish American who supports the Constitution and the Jewish democratic state and hates all the anti-Semitic tyrants and terrorists of the world, from Putin in Russia and Mohammed bin Salman in Saudi Arabia to Hezbollah and Hamas, I am here because of these things and because of everything that I believe in and stand for. At this moment when democracy is under siege all over the world, America must stand tall for the Constitution of the United States, and this resolution is about one thing and one thing only, the punishment of speech. So we have the chance to show the world what the American Constitution means and how we hold fast to our core principles, even when we're drawn away from them by our passions and our righteous anger. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land, and the very heart of it is our First Amendment, which protects every citizen's freedom of speech and says Congress shall make no law abridging it. The freedom to speak includes the freedom to disagree the right to think radically differently from the majority about important things, or else it is no freedom at all. It's easy to defend freedom of speech for people when you agree with them. The test for each member today is whether you can defend freedom of speech for people when you most fundamentally and vehemently disagree with them. The First Amendment is like an apple, and everybody wants to take just one little bite out of it. Left-wing speech, right-wing speech, Sexist speech, feminist speech, homophobic speech, pro-LGBTQ speech, anti-war speech, pro-war speech, religious speech, sacrilegious speech. Everybody just wants one bite out of the apple. But you know what? At the end of the day, once everybody's taken his or her bite, you know what's left? Nothing. There's nothing left. If you want to save the apple, you have to learn to tolerate not just the speech you love the most, but the speech you hate the most. Now, like the First Amendment, the speech or debate clause embodies this central value in the proceedings of this body. It states that members of Congress shall in all cases accept treason, felony, and breach of the peace be privileged from arrest during their attendance at the session of their respective houses and in going to and from the same. And for any speech or debate in either house, they shall not be questioned in any other place. In the two and a half century history of this great chamber, members have been overwhelmingly censured for their actions not for their speech. Actions like participating in the violent assault against Charles Sumner of Massachusetts, assaulting Representative Josiah Grinnell of Iowa with a cane, selling military academy appointments, taking bribes, engaging in mail fraud and payroll fraud, improper spending of campaign funds, embezzling congressional money, engaging in sexual misconduct with a House page. Do you see the difference? It's not what they said, it's what they did. And I can find only three categories of cases where speech is the sum and substance of the charge, and all are exceptions that have been ratified by the Supreme Court. One, violent threats against other members of this body, which as the court has found as recently as April, are not protected by the First Amendment. Two, fighting words the use of unparliamentary or aggressively insulting language on the House floor that constitute a direct affront to another member. And the Supreme Court has said that fighting words are not protected. Three, speech advocating or promoting treason, secession, or insurrection, all of them outside of the First Amendment because of numerous provisions in our Constitution condemning and opposing insurrection. That's it. Violent threats against other members, fighting words on the floor, speech inciting insurrection. The resolution offered against the gentlewoman from Michigan is all, about for sen is all about censoring her for her political speech and literally, literally nothing else. No actions, no conduct, 
is being alleged or punished. The entire motion is about her speech and how much we hate it and how wrong we think it is. And all of that is fine for all of us to express individually on the floor, in the media, on the social media. And I have said to Ms. Tlaib myself that the phrase from the river to the sea is abhorrent to me, even with her published explanation of what she means by it, which is very different from what Hamas uh, says about it and uses it, but I would never think of punishing her or disciplining her because we disagree about that. But the resolution proposes to condemn her for quoting this objectionable phrase in her video, a video which is indisputably protected speech under the First Amendment. Unlike the gentleman from New York, Mr. Santos, whose proposed expulsion by members of the majority was rejected by a commanding bipartisan majority last week because he has not been convicted of either the criminal or ethics charges outstanding against him, Ms. Tlaib has been criminally charged with nothing. She's been civilly sued for nothing, and she has no ethics charges outstanding before the Ethics Committee in any way. And it's easy to see why. She cannot face criminal punishment or civil liability for her speech because the United States of America, we don't punish people for their political ideas, no matter how wrongheaded or offensive we think they are. And the majority might think they are, or it might not, but in any event, it doesn't make any difference. She won re-election with 71% of the vote in Michigan's 12th district, and if anyone's going to punish her for her political ideas or performance, it must be the people of her own district who sent her here to represent them. Mr. Speaker, the disciplinary process should never be used to punish the political speech or viewpoints of a member of this chamber just because the majority disagrees. The punishment of political viewpoints will mean that members will be censured just for being in the minority rather than in the majority. And that will come to stifle our dialogue and haunt all of our work. For example, the good Speaker of the House, who is my friend from the Judiciary Committee, has taken positions in the past arguing that sex between consenting gay adults should be a crime, that the Supreme Court was wrong to strike down sodomy laws in Lawrence versus Texas, and wrong to give gay people the right to marry in Obergefell, a right that he said is, quote, the dark harbinger of chaos and sexual anarchy that could doom even the strongest republic. Now, the vast majority of Americans reject these positions as extreme in public opinion polls and believe all citizens should have the freedom to pursue their own love lives and to marry. If the House majority changes hands, should we actually censure the former Speaker of the House for his constitutional apostasy and thought crimes against the rights of millions of Americans? I sure hope not, because the gentleman from Louisiana is absolutely entitled to his political and religious views, no matter how far outside the constitutional and American mainstream they are. Under the First Amendment, extremism is in the eye of the beholder. But how will we resist the temptation to punish him in the future if we set a precedent today that members can be censured and canceled simply for their political heresies in the eyes of the majority controlling the House? If we say the general lady can be punished because her views of history are wrong, as I heard my friend say, can we then punish members of this body who refuse to vote to take down in our halls statues of members of Congress from the 19th century who joined the Confederacy and committed treason against the Union? People like John Breckinridge, a former vice president and U.S. senator who was expelled from the Senate after he defected to the Confederacy? Should we use the disciplinary process to impose historical orthodoxy? If anything, there's a stronger constitutional case for punishing the 120 members of the House who voted against taking down statutes of Confederate traitors because multiple provisions of the Constitution explicitly forbid and punish participation in insurrection. Do members who voted that way want to risk being censured in the future by establishing that divergent minority views on history are a legitimate matter of institutional discipline? And what about the members who defended conspiracy theorist Alex Jones and stated that Sandy Hook and Parkland mass murders of dozens of school children were staged by Hollywood to generate support for gun safety? That's not even a matter of opinion, but adjudicated positive fact. And still, the Constitution protects your right to be wrong about facts unless you're deliberately defrauding or cheating someone out of something like money or campaign contributions. And 
What, what of all of those members who have followed the, the former president in advancing the big lie that he actually won the 2020 election? Should we convert the 60 federal and state court decisions rejecting claims of election fraud and corruption into discipline and punishment of members who still cling to that view? What about the 11 members of this body who lost the 405 to 11 vote in 2019, recognizing that the mass killing of Armenians by Ottoman Turks during World War I was a genocide? Does their denial of the genocidal character of the deaths of more than one million Armenians qualify them for collective punishment today, institutional punishment? Can we convert, convert differing interpretations of history into the basis for disciplinary action? Well, perhaps you say political dissent should be uniquely punishable when it comes to foreign policy. But of course, the First Amendment doesn't distinguish between speech having domestic or foreign policy content. All of it is protected. If not, every member of this body who's voted against aid to Ukraine and praises Vladimir Putin as the former president did for his genius and his savvy, or says Putin is not our enemy, as a number of members have, could be censured for it by this body. This resolution not only degrades our Constitution, but it cheapens the meaning of discipline in this body for people who actually commit wrongful actions like bribery, fraud, violent assault, and so on. When people are punished for their political ideas and expression, they will wear it as a badge of honor. They will fundraise on it, millions of dollars will flow in to people who are punished that way, and they will join the, pub the public in mocking the new speech censors of Congress. A secure constitutional republic which actively protects the freedom of dissenting speech to allow for serious debate and growth as a society shows its strength not its weakness, as Thomas Jefferson, whose beautiful statue is right outside of this room, put it, if there be any among us who would wish to dissolve this union or to change its Republican form, let them stand undisturbed as monuments of the safety with which error of opinion may be tolerated where reason is left free to combat it. Now is a moment when we will get to see who in the House of the Representatives believes in the freedom of speech, even the speech they hate, versus those who want to impose a new political straitjacket of cancel culture on America and Congress. I reserve. Gentleman from Maryland reserves. Gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Fine speech. You talked about setting a precedence. I think there is a precedence. I remember you guys must have searched really high and far and long to find the people who've voted against censoring Gosar or Marjorie Taylor Greene. There is a precedence. You're right. When you talk about freedom of speech and who protects that freedom of speech, you're talking to a Marine. And you're about to talk to a Navy SEAL, people who would give their lives to defend the freedom of speech. I understand that probably as well as anybody. But let me be clear, this is not about a First Amendment issue. Rashida Tlaib has the right to spew anti-Semitic vitriol and even call for the destruction of the Jewish state. But the House of Representatives also has the right to make it clear that her hate speech does not reflect the opinion of the chamber, and that's what this resolution is about. When you talk about from the river to the sea, we talked about this with the parliamentarian. We talked about it with legal counsel. We talked about precedent. We got the intel committee to make sure that the facts were straight. We did our homework on the whether there is a precedence on this. If this is not worthy of censure, what is? When you can call for the annihilation of a country and its people, if that's not worthy of a censure, what is? With that, I'd like to yield four minutes to the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Van Orden. Mr. Before, Speaker. I, before I yield, I will remind the members to direct your comments to the chair. The gentleman from Wisconsin is recognized for four minutes. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of my colleague from Georgia's privileged resolution to censure Congresswoman, the Congresswoman from Minnesota. But before I do so, I'd like to remind my dear friend from Maryland that the Founding Fathers did not envision Twitter but the Nuremberg War Crimes Tribunals decided that genocide, in fact, is a felony. 
One month ago today, October 7th, 2023, savages from the terrorist organization Hamas invaded Israel from the Gaza Strip, intentionally targeted Jewish civilians, men, women, children, and infants, and then slaughtered them. Jews are being killed at a level not seen since the Holocaust, and worldwide anti-Semitism is at an all-time high. We've seen anti-Semitic and pro-terrorist rallies at major universities across America, and this last weekend here in our nation's capital, we saw over 200,000 people rallying in support of the terrorist organization Hamas that committed these atrocities in Israel. They defaced our national monuments and the White House. But most disturbingly, in this House, the House that freed men from the scourge that is slavery and gave women suffrage, we have a member that not only supports this organization, Hamas, that slaughtered these Jews, but has actively called for the eradication of the Jews as a people by promoting the slogan, from the river to the sea, on social media. She represents this as an aspirational phrase, and she is correct. It is aspirational for those who call for the destruction of the Jewish people. When I retired from the SEAL teams in 2014, I vowed that I would defend the Jewish people if any of the horrors that took place on October, October 7, 2023, were to occur. And following the murder of the innocents that took place on October 7, I fulfilled that promise by visiting Israel. I visited with war-wounded soldiers in medical facilities, I consulted with the military, various governmental officials, and I grieved with the families who had lost their loved ones to this savagery. I visited the kibbutzims where infants were butchered by beasts, including one that was removed from his pregnant mother's stomach as she watched in horror before she herself was executed. I bore witness to these horrors that can barely be described so that no one can ever tell me that these events did not take place and that Hamas is responsible for them and are, are enabled by those who parrot their slogans. Another massacre site I visited was the Supernova Music Festival where over 200 children were butchered, their lives ruthlessly extinguished after many were raped, tortured, and dismembered, then burnt. As I was walking through the field, strewn with the detritus of the war crime, I noticed some cups, simple festival cups. And I asked the Israeli minister I was with if I could take some home to the United States so that I would have a tangible object that could represent the lives of those beautiful children from around the world who were killed. I brought back enough of these cups to give to many of my colleagues, including the one I stand here today to censure. She and many other members of this House need to understand that these were human beings. They were not slogans or a flag or a chant. There were children who will never be able to dance again, never be able to love again. And most tragically, they will never be able to look into the eyes of their children they will never be able to bear. I ask you today, Mr. Speaker, if you had the chance to stop the Holocaust, would you? I call upon my... You yield me 30 seconds. I move to yield for another 30 seconds, please. The gentleman's recognized for 30 seconds. I call upon my fellow colleagues from both parties to say yes. We would stop the Holocaust. We will not stay silent as the 21st century Holocaust unfolds before our very eyes. We will not. I cast my vote today to censure, to affirm our commitment to justice and in the, the defense of the Israeli people. With that, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Georgia reserves. Gentleman from Maryland is recognized. You have 4.5 minutes to the gentlewoman from Michigan, Ms. Tlaib. Gentleman lady from Michigan is recognized for five minutes. Or I'm four the and a half minutes, sorry. <laughs> It's okay. I'm the only Palestinian American serving in Congress, Mr. Chair, and my perspective is needed here now more than ever. I will not be silenced, and I will not let you distort my words. Folks forget I'm from the city of Detroit, the most beautiful blackest city in the country where I learned to speak truth to power even if my voice shakes. 
trying to bully or censor me won't work because this movement for a ceasefire is much bigger than one person. It's growing every single day. There are millions of people across our country who oppose Netanyahu's extremism and are done watching our government support collective punishment and the use of white phosphorus bombs that melt flesh to the bone. They are done watching our government, Mr. Chair, supporting cutting off food, water, electricity, and medical care to millions of people with nowhere to go. Like me, Mr. Chair, they don't believe the answer to war crimes is more war crimes. The refusal of Congress and the administration to acknowledge Palestinian lives is chipping at way at my soul. Over 10,000 Palestinians have been killed. Majority, majority were children. But let me be clear. My criticism has always been of the Israeli government and Netanyahu's actions. It is important to separate people and governments, Mr. Chair. No government is beyond criticism. The idea that criticizing the government of Israel is anti-Semitic sets a very dangerous precedent, and it's being used to silence diverse voices speaking up for human rights across our nation. Do you realize what it's like, Mr. Chair, for the people outside the chamber right now, listening in agony to their own government dehumanizing them? To hear the President of the United States, we helped elect, dispute death tolls as we see video after video of dead children and parents under rubble. Mr. Chair, do you know what it's like to fear rising hate crimes, to know how Islamophobia and anti-Semitism makes us all less safe, and worry that your own child might suffer the horrors that six-year-old Wadia did in Illinois. I can't believe I have to say this, but pa Palestinian people are not disposable. We are human beings, just like anyone else. My city, my grandmother, like all Palestinians, just wants to live her life with freedom and human dignity we all deserve. Speaking up to save lives, Mr. Chair, no matter faith, no matter ethnicity, should not be controversial in this chamber. The cries of the Palestinian and, ch Palestinian and Israeli children sound no different to me. Why, what I don't understand is why the cries of Palestinians sound different to you all. We cannot lose our shared humanity, Mr. Chair. I hear the voices of advocates in Israel, in Palestine, across America, and around the world for peace. I am inspired by their courageous, the courageous survivors in Israel who have lost loved ones, yet are calling for a ceasefire and the end to violence. I am grateful to the, to the people in the streets for the peace, peace movement with countless Jewish Americans across the country standing up and lovingly saying, not in our name. We will continue to call for a ceasefire, Mr. Chair, for the immediate delivery of critical humanitarian aid to Gaza, for the release of all hostages and those arbitrarily detained, and for every American to come home. We will continue to work for a real lasting peace that upholds human rights and dignity of all people, and centers in peaceful coexistence between Israelis and Palestinians, and censures no one, no, no one, and ensures that no person, no child, has to suffer or live in fear of violence. 71% of Michigan Democrats support a ceasefire. So you can try to censor me, but you can't silence their voices. I urge my colleagues to join with the majority of Americans and support a ceasefire now to save as many lives as possible. President Biden must listen to and represent all of us, not just some of us. I urge the president to have the courage to call for a ceasefire and the end of killings. Thank you, and I yield. Uh, gentle lady yields back. Gentleman from Maryland reserves. Gentleman from Georgia is recognized. If this was about calling for a ceasefire, we would not have these proceedings. I was wrong, by the way, when I said that it must have taken a long time to find somebody who hadn't uh, voted for censorship from the other side of the aisle. You didn't find it. The gentleman from the other side of the aisle actually did vote for censorship on a First Amendment right. So I find it rather funny. We just researched it. And uh, unless my sources are wrong, the vast majority 
of the other side of the aisle actually voted for censorship based on a First Amendment right. I wanted to uh, also say that my heart goes out to the Palestinian people. It truly does. Especially those people that were bombed in the hospital, which my colleague knows wasn't from the Israelis. And yet, the statement is contrary to that, even though our intel was very clear, as was our president, very clear. That's what this debate is about. With that, I yield four minutes to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Roy. The gentleman from Texas is recognized for four minutes. I thank the gentleman from Georgia for his time. And with respect to the gentleman from Maryland, um, I understand the perspectives with respect to free speech. And I certainly wish to always stand aside the protection of free speech in this country. But this goes well beyond that, because we're not talking about restraining the gentleladies from Michigan's ability to speak. As an American citizen, we're not talking about punishing her, putting her in jail. What we're talking about is whether a member of the United States House of Representatives, whether a member of this body representing this nation is justified in putting forward a defense of the actions of Hamas terrorists that murdered innocent Israeli citizens, is holding United States citizens and Israelis hostage, and in her own language was defending on October 8th, a mere 24 hours into the brutal and barbaric attacks in which babies were beheaded Babies were placed into ovens, literally. Moms were raped in a house while their babies were put in an oven. A documented account, video evidence. And this is dismissed as resistance to an apartheid state. My, my problem is, is that the gentlelady is also referring to, quote, Joe Biden supporting the genocide of the Palestinian people. The gentlelady has put forward that by virtue of the United States of America funding in solidarity the people of Israel in defense of their right to exist, that by virtue of our position as Americans, standing in front of that flag in this chamber representing 330 million Americans, that by funding and supporting Israel, we are somehow perpetuating the call for violence that we saw unfold right before our eyes on October 7th in the most brutal and heinous acts that some of us have ever seen. I do not doubt the gentlelady's sincerity of her concern for her home people and concerns about the attacks on the people of Gaza. I had some people who called into question that I would put out my public support for my former colleague, Justin Amash, who lost cousins in a church, you know, receiving missile fire into a building next to a church. I genuinely pray for the people of Israel, the people of Gaza, the people throughout the world that are now dealing with all of this. But the gentlelady cannot, as a member of Congress, be standing up and telling the world that what we saw unfold in attacking Israel is justified. We can't. Free speech matters. I have grave concern right now about where this institution is going with respect to censures. I voted against the censure last week because I thought it had drafting problems and I thought it had significant concerns it raised. I believe the work that was done by my friend from Georgia here put forward a resolution that is worthy of support. And so I support the resolution and believe that we should pass it. I thank the gentleman from Georgia. Reserve. Gentleman yields back, gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Maryland is recognized. Um, I recognize the gentlelady from Massachusetts for one minute. The gentlelady is recognized for one minute. 
Mr. Speaker, I rise in opposition to this censure resolution that is blatantly Islamophobic, anti-democratic, and an utter waste of time. This resolution is as dishonest as it is unproductive. Any member who denies that Congresswoman Tlaib has opposed the killing of, innocent, of civilians, Israeli, Palestinian, and Americans alike, is willfully ignoring the truth. Representative Tlaib was elected by voters in Michigan to do exactly what she does best, advocate for a better, safer, more just world. She leads with love, speaks truth to power, and seeks justice even when her life and that of her family and her staff are threatened. As a daughter, mother, sister, friend, advocate, and effective, duly elected three-term first ever Palestinian American member of Congress, she has been a much needed voice in an institution that has too often failed to listen. Today, Republicans are again attacking a Democratic colleague just because they don't like what she has to say. Another shameful but predictable ploy of distraction from the real traffickers of hate who are obsessed with policing progressive women of color. I oppose this offensive resolution for every little girl from Michigan to the Middle East who sees herself when they see the leadership of Representative Rashida Tlaib, and I urge my colleagues to do the same. General lady's time has expired. Gentleman we reserve from Maryland Reserves. Gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield one minute, 30 seconds to the gentleman from Michigan, Marine Corps General Bergman. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I am reminded of Proverbs 1821, which says, words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. I take no joy in standing here today to censure a fellow Michigan representative, but Congresswoman Tlaib's words and actions are abhorrent and beneath her office. Representative Tlaib has tripled down on her anti-Semitic and anti-Israel rhetoric, recently posting a video with protesters chanting, from the river to the sea, with a follow-up comment explaining that that phrase is a peaceful aphorism about human rights. However, that quote has long been a rallying cry for supporters of Hamas and other terrorists hell-bent on destroying Israel. From the river to the sea refers to the area, of course, between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea, which is the state of Israel. Jewish Americans are being targeted in their schools and on our nation's streets. Just yesterday, a California man, man supporting Israel was murdered during competing pro-Israel, pro-Palestinian rallies. Words matter, and words have real-world implications. Congresswoman Tlaib's continued assault on the only Jewish state in the world, Israel, is reprehensible, and this body should come together and support this censure resolution to say to Representative, Representative Tlaib, enough. I yield back. General yields back. Gentleman Reserve. from Georgia reserves. Gentleman from Maryland is recognized. Um, I will yield one minute to the gentlelady from Michigan, Ms. Dingell. Gentlelady is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in opposition to this resolution. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib is an important member of our Democratic caucus and our Michigan delegation. Her voice matters. She is the only Palestinian American in the Congress, and this is a representative body. Her perspective represents many that she rep her perspective reflects many that she represents, especially when it's not twisted. Congresswoman Tlaib is entitled to the same constitutionally protected freedom of speech and expression that every other American and every other member of this body has. And this resolution is an attack on that fundamental right. I spent all weekend in Michigan this last weekend talking to all the communities about the meaning of this phrase. And there are very strong feelings on all sides. And it's very clear that people interpret words in different ways. Personally, I choose not to use a phrase that is offensive to some and that many perceive as a threat. But I also take seriously living in a country that does not respect, restrict, General forbid, or time has expired. free speech. Gentlemen we, reserves. We reserve. Gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield two minutes to my gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Van Drew. Gentleman is recognized for two minutes. Soulless, disgusting, sickening, reprehensible, repulsive. These are not my words, but the words of my Democratic colleagues when asked about the decision of 15 members who refused to condemn Hamas' brutal terror attacks on innocent Israelis. 
But some of those 15 didn't stop there. Several of these members have gone on to use their massive platforms to accuse Israel of apartheid, genocide, and war crimes. This rhetoric by members of Congress is not only careless, it is dangerous. American cities and the cities around the world have been flooded with anti-Israeli protests. Protesters scream, Intifada. They demand a cleansing of Jews from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, the destruction of Israel, the destruction of the United States of America. They rip down the pictures of Jewish children and Jewish babies being held hostage in Gaza. It is reprehensible. It is unacceptable. Hamas is a terrorist organization that does not care about the Palestinian people and whose sole goal is to wipe Israel from the face of the earth. Babies, babies that were burned alive, babies that were beheaded, women that were raped, beaten, displayed, and then murdered. Children, mothers, grandmothers, fathers, grandfathers, they were all killed. Anyone who supports this or refuses to condemn it has no place in the United States Congress. I don't like censure. I hate censure. But we have to draw a line in the sand somewhere. We do not entertain hate in this Congress. We confront it. And we must do it with absolute conviction. This is not a freedom of speech issue. This is an issue of the Congress of the United Gentlemen's States time having expired. the right to say this is wrong. I urge all of my colleagues Gentlemen's to vote for this. Gentlemen's time has expired. Gentleman from Georgia, reserves. Reserves. General from Maryland is recognized. Yield one minute to the distinguished gentleman from Massachusetts, the chairman of the Rules Committee, Mr. McGovern. Gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, we should reject this resolution for a few simple reasons. First is protecting this institution. Look, I don't agree with a lot of what people say around here. I think a lot of what my Republican friends say is offensive and even racist. But I don't go around introducing censure resolutions. So if we're going to start censuring anybody who says something we don't like, all we will do from now on is censure each other all day. The second reason is freedom of speech. Look, my Republican colleagues go on and on about cancel culture, and here they are today trying to cancel someone. And I don't want any lectures from people who are trying to create a 1984-style thought police. I don't know what is wrong with them, Mr. Speaker. If this is not the high point of Republican hypocrisy, I don't know what is. To my Republican colleagues, you are unleashing something very bad here. You are setting an awful precedent for this institution. This is a very slippery slope. And I strongly urge a no vote on this resolution to protect this institution, to protect freedom of speech, and to reject this majority's cynical attempts to divide and distract America. And I would just say to my Republican friends, if you don't General, like listening to people you, di time you disagree expired. with, get a new job. I remind mm -hmm. members to, read, to direct their remarks to the chair. The gentleman from Maryland we'll Reserves, reserve. the gentleman from Georgia, is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield two minutes to the gentleman and Marine from Ohio, Mr. Miller. The gentleman from Ohio is recognized for Thanks. two minutes. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I rise today at what I think is a very serious moment for our country and for the world. Hate and anti-Semitism are on the rise. Our strongest ally and great friend Israel is under siege at the hands of brutal terrorists. And a member of the United States Marines House of Representatives echoing a line that is clear to call murder Jews and push Israel off the map from the river to the sea. To be clear, from the river to the sea, as someone who's Jewish, means to exterminate my people. Never again. Mr. Speaker, the ADL recently reported that anti-Semitic incidents rose by roughly 400% in the two weeks following Hamas's evil attack on Israel, which began one month ago today. There is no question that these incidents are a direct result of the hate-filled lies and anti-Semitic rhetoric perpetuated by members of this body. From the river to the sea. What exactly does that mean, from the river to the sea? Palestine will be free. I'm happy to educate all of you. It means the extermination of the Jewish people. I understand that my colleague, the gentlelady from Michigan, thinks that this is some kind of aspirational message. It's a joke. 
Mr. Speaker, I do think that this is an aspirational message, but it's not an aspiration for peaceful coexistence. It's an aspiration to erasure the state of Israel and its people, the Jewish people who call it home, who've been refugees since the very beginning of time. It is an aspiration to the genocide of Jews. Mr. Speaker, I believe strongly that members of this body should be able to speak their minds freely, but I also think there should be consequences for those who use their platforms to perpetuate garbage that puts any American at risk, especially because of their religion. Mr. Speaker, I believe that actions have consequences, and I believe that after a long string of anti-Semitic remarks and hate-filled rhetoric, Censure is an appropriate consequence for the gentle lady from Michigan. Gentleman's never time again. has expired. Damn it means never again. I yield back. Gentleman from Georgia reserves. Yes. Gentleman from Maryland is recognized. The gentle, um, I will yield one minute to the gentle lady from the Virgin Islands, Ms. Plaskett. Gentle lady is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I come before you today in support of my colleague, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. All members of Congress are entitled to freedom of speech. We also recognize that words matter and that they have the power to uplift or to harm others. While I've joined the statement rejecting certain harmful phraseology that's been used, I believe that Congresswoman Tlaib's statement that she did not intend to wish harm to the Jewish community by her words. Congresswoman Tlaib has all since clarified that she was intending to make an aspirational call for freedom, human rights, and peaceful coexistence, not death, destruction, or hate. The ability to have free speech, but to be willing to discuss and to change and clarify is not just mature, but democratic. No member should express harm to others, and Congresswoman Tlaib has been willing to listen, clarify, and express compassion. Yet, on the other side of the aisle, we have seen repeatedly Republican members make disparaging comments that have threatened our fellow the colleagues, ladies, time their expired. families, and groups of... May I yield? Um, but I can yield just 10 seconds more. Additional 10 seconds. We have had members of the Republican conference make floor speeches about the Great Replacements Theory that's suggestive of white nationalism. As a black woman, I am offended Will you censor your, your co-chair of your time conference? Has expired. We need to uplift. G gentleman we from need to allow Maryland free speech. The gentlelady is no longer Perform recognized. The gentlelady is no longer recognized. The gentleman from Maryland we'll reserve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield two minutes, 30 seconds to the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Wilson. The gentleman from South Carolina is recognized for two minutes and 30 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of Congressman Rich McCormick's resolution of censure. Enemies of civilization are gruesomely bold and clear on their murderous intentions, a heinously revealing declaration of their barbaric intentions by the Iranian puppet Hamas is detailed in the Hamas Covenant of August the 18th, 1988. In the midst of insane provisions is Article 7, and I quote, the day of judgment will not come about until Muslims fight Jews and kill them. Then the Jews will hide behind rocks and trees, and the rocks and trees will cry out, O oh Muslim, there is a Jew hiding behind me. Come and kill him. End of quote. They're very clear. What they're talking about is death to Israel and then death to America. The New York Post is correct in warning last week that we in America are subject to another 9-11 attack being imminent by such people. The goal of Hamas puppets of Iran is to murder the Jews worldwide. It is fake news about curing the Palestinian people. This is not about territory. Suffering by the Hamas oppressed people of Gaza is solely Hamas dictated. We know the duplicious wording of from the river to the sea is nothing more than a call to mass murder of Jewish people will then lead to mass murder in America. Hamas and Houthis and also the uh, other Hezbollah are Iranian puppets of Iran with their intent, and we are actually in a war we did not choose, of dictators with rule of gun attacking democracies with rule of law. 
This began with the war criminal Putin's invasion of Ukraine on February 24, 2022, and led to the Hamas invasion of Israel on Putin's birthday, October 7th. Over 30 missile attacks have already seriously injured American troops who are serving uh, in this war. Bold and clear are the dictators with Putin's treatise of 2021 that Ukraine does not exist. The Chinese Communist Party threatens the 24 million people of Taiwan. They don't exist. In Iran, chants in English, death to Israel, death to America. It is sad to hear how the Iranian propaganda is pr being promoted by our media and colleges. As the grateful father of four sons who have served in Iraq, Egypt, and Afghanistan, I appreciate the, Ira the Israeli and Ukrainian troops for their courage. Democracies will prevail by building peace through strength. I yield back. Gentleman yields Reserve. back. A gentleman Reserve. from Georgia reserves. A gentleman from Maryland is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield one minute to the gentlelady from Washington, Ms. Jayabal. Gentlelady from Washington is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong opposition to this resolution. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib is one of only two Muslim American women elected to this body and the only Palestinian American in Congress. She has fought tirelessly and successfully to get clean drinking water for her constituents, to ensure that people have housing and environmental justice. If we truly want Congress to be a diverse body that represents the diversity of views across this country, we have to be willing to stand up for those diversity of views to be expressed. We don't have to agree with them, but we do have to protect the right to the freedom of speech, which this body is absolutely required to do. Our country and our world are in crisis. People are suffering everywhere. Historic and present traumas for Jews, Muslims, Arabs, South Asians, Sikhs, and so many others are playing themselves out. And we, as the elected representatives of the people, should be working together to protect the rights of every American to say what they believe Gen General and General ensure that we preserve our democracy. Vote no on this the, the, terrible gen resolution. The gentleman I, from uh, Maryland reserves. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield three minutes to the gentleman from New York, Mr. Lawler. The gentleman from New York is recognized for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In 1893, Catherine Lee Bates wrote America the Beautiful. In it, she wrote, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. And as the Bible says in Psalm 72:8. He shall have dominion from sea to sea and from the river into the, unto the ends of the earth. That is aspirational. Chanting from the river to the sea is not. Chanting from the river to the sea is calling for the eradication of Israel. I would hardly define that as aspirational. My colleague, Representative Rashida Tlaib, has parroted the talking points and the message of Hamas, a terrorist organization whose sworn mission is the destruction of Israel and the eradication of the Jewish people. Israel is our strongest ally in the Middle East, a beacon of hope, peace, and liberty in the region. It is the only multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious democracy. It is not an apartheid state. The oppressor of the Palestinian people is Hamas and the Palestinian Authority. So if you want Palestinians to be free, reject Hamas. Reject the Palestinian Authority. Demand Hamas surrender. Calling for a ceasefire that they won't abide to is outrageous. They need to immediately surrender and return the hostages to their families. My colleague repeated a vile and disgusting lie that Israel bombed a hospital, knowing full well that was factually inaccurate, knowing full well that this administration, the Biden administration, advised her it was inaccurate gave her a private briefing, and still she continued to repeat this vile, disgusting lie. Why? 
It was intended to undermine. It was intended to turn the world against Israel. Why? Because when she chants from the river to the sea, she believes it. She believes Israel should be eradicated. Because otherwise you would never, ever repeat that vile, vile statement. And it's not. And that's why we're here. It's not a lie. And that's why we're here. And Paul Kessler. The gentleman will just suspend. Let's have order in the chamber. The gentleman is recognized. Paul Kessler was killed for holding an Israeli flag in the United States of America. We are losing respect for the sanctity of life, the rule of law, and the important role of faith. Fire. We must combat anti-Semitism, and it starts with this censure. The gentleman from Georgia reserves. The gentleman from Maryland is recognized. I yield one minute to the gentlewoman from Missouri, Ms. Bush. The gentlewoman from Missouri is recognized for one minute. St. Louis and I rise today in opposition to this central res resolution um, and in also in opposition to the reckless manner that people in this house speak when they don't realize or don't care that they put targets on the backs of actual people, most of whom are black and brown, because of, of uh, a lack of care and a lack of understanding and a lack of seeing the humanity of folks who look like Rashida Tlaib. It's outrageous that my colleagues are blatantly, blatantly attempting to silence the only Palestinian American representative right here. Um, it's outrageous, but it's not surprising. And let me tell you, it's not surprising because this place is where 1,700 members of Congress, this elected body, enslaved black people. It's not surprising because they thought it was right. It's not surprising because this is a place where members continue to claim that the insurrection on the Capitol just appeared to look like a normal tourist visit. It's not surprising because this is the place where our black and brown staff members repeatedly speak of experiencing racism and sexism, Islamophobia, get pushed off of elevators, xenophobia and more right here in this workplace. This is the place. And let me say this. She mourns for the 1400 Israelis. The gentlelady's that time has expired. Life. She mourns for the 10,000 and she will not stop. The no gentlelady's more. time no has more expired. Lies. Cease fire now. And she takes the, the death threats that you all send. That, that the gentlelady is no longer speaker. recognized. The gentleman from Maryland. To her, to her, the desire to save lives is greater than Gentle, the gentleman from Maryland is recognized. That's okay. what I said. We'll, we'll reserve. The gentleman from Maryland reserves. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield two minutes, 30 seconds. The gentleman is recognized for two minutes. Mr. Speaker, I yield two minutes, 30 seconds to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Fallon. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was sitting here not planning to speak at all. And then I heard words from the other side of the aisle. They were flowery. They were eloquent. They had passion. They were articulate. They were powerful, even moving probably to some. But were they true? I heard about protecting speech. The First Amendment and our beloved Constitution. Who was not for protecting speech and our beloved Constitution and the First Amendment? So does the gentleman from Maryland and our friends across the aisle really believe that? And then I heard about slippery slope and setting a precedent. On February 4th, 2021, Marjorie Taylor Greene was removed from her committees for things that she said before she was a member of Congress. November 17th, 2021, Paul Gozar was censured for a cartoon that his staff posted. Tasteless cartoon, though it be, that was speech. So we're protecting speech, are we? Speech that we disagree with. Calling for the deliberate killing, calling the deliberate killing of innocent civilians resistance. Claiming a bombing of a Gaza hospital was done by the Israelis that killed hundreds of people when we knew that was not true, and yet Ms. Tlaib doubled and tripled down on that. That was false, and that was a lie. And then repeating and celebrating a genocidal chant from the river to the sea. That's not a cartoon, and that's not saying some things that you said before you were a member of Congress. And then we were accused of, oh, it's Islamophobic, or 
pointed out that she was a woman of color or she's the only Palestinian. What does any of that matter? This is about words and actions and we hold everyone to the same standard. We're not trying to jail her. We're not trying to expel her. We're not levering a civil fine. We're not even talking about removing her from committees. We're simply firmly and formally disagreeing with her and chastising her for her words and her actions. What she did was not leadership. It was demagoguery of the worst kind. and It was beneath the dignity of this office, her office, and the alleged commitment to peace she claims. Mr. Speaker, I yield back. It's back. Gentleman from Georgia Reserves. Gentleman um, from I will Maryland yield one minute to the gentleman recognized. from New York, Mr. Bowman. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. I rise in opposition to this resolution. First and foremost, can we please stop misrepresenting Representative Tlaib's words? She does not want to kill Jews. She is not in support of Hamas. She is speaking as someone who is the only Palestinian American in U.S. history to serve in this body. Without her voice, we would lack even more empathy for the people of Palestine. We would not have someone with direct personal experience speaking against the siege that is happening now in Gaza. This body needs empathy and compassion for all people, not just people that look like the majority of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. And maybe because of your lack of diversity, you lack the cognitive and emotional ability to recognize diverse opinions when they speak truth to power. And you absolutely need to open up your mind to other people and other experiences, especially when they are Muslim and when they are women and when they are people of color. You had a member of your time party expired. call my colleague a terrorist, and you didn't censor her. But we're Gentleman's having this conversation now about your interpretation of words. Members are reminded to direct their comments to the chair. Uh, for purpose of debate, the, the gentleman from Maryland has five minutes. The gentleman from Georgia has a minute and a half. The gentleman from Maryland reserves. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. I reserve. Oh. Gentleman reserve. Gentleman from Maryland. How much time do we have? I'm five minutes. Five minutes, okay. I, I yield one minute to the gentleman from Indiana, Mr. Carson. The gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you to my friend. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, this, these, this censure measure is a sham. When someone who is an American, a Muslim, a woman, and a Palestinian dares to speak out for her people, she's told to be quiet. Stop talking about Palestinian brothers and sisters in the same breath as Jewish brothers and sisters. My sister Rashida is a child of the Midwest, representing the best of Midwestern sensibilities. She also exemplifies the rich tradition of the Islamic faith in the Midwest. She's a bold leader, she's a fair leader, and a compassionate leader, and most importantly, she's an American. Standing up for one oppressed people does not negate the oppression of another oppressed people. We should be working together to end this terrible suffering and eliminate these sham censors and get back to the work of the people. That's why they elected us. I yield back. Reserve. We reserve. Gentleman from Georgia is recognized. I reserve. Gentleman reserve. Gentleman from Maryland is recognized. I yield one minute to the gentlewoman from Illinois, Ms. Ramirez. Gentle lady is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Chairman. Words hold power. They're intentional representations of our values and our beliefs. And our democracy is at its strongest when we protect the right to dissent, to resist, and to speak truth to power. But over the past few weeks, this body has wrongfully and dangerously conflated dissent with hate speech and has willfully characterized acts of resistance as acts of bigotry. Bigotry and hateful speech are real. They're tangible threats to our shared humanity, our multiracial democracy, and we must address them. As someone who has heard members of this body who are not being brought up for censure casually use their platforms to carelessly promote violent, racist, anti-Semitic, Islamophobic, xenophobic, and anti-immigrant language and ideals, I am clear that this resolution is another ill-intentioned attempt to persecute dissenting voices who refuse to stay silent and whose perspective challenges this body and the dominant narrative. We must resist the urge to scapegoat 
out and vilify those who disagree with us. And I unequivocally stand with Rashida Tlaib, my friend, and His I'll be voting against the resolution. And I encourage my friends to do here your job. Gentleman from Maryland reserves. Gentleman from Georgia. I reserve. Reserves. Gentleman from Maryland is recognized. I yield 30 seconds to the gentlelady from Minnesota, Ms. Omar. Gentlelady is recognized for 30 seconds. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. It is glaring hypocrisy when you have Republicans on the other side of the aisle trying to create definitions and say Rashida wants to annihilate people when Max Miller himself went on TV and said we're turning Gaza into a parking lot and we want to annihilate Palestinians. Nobody condemned him on that side of the aisle. What is true here is that every single one of them has not acknowledged the fact that Palestinians are dying in the tens of thousands but we'll continue to say it is us who are not acknowledging humanity. Rashida will stand strong. The gentle lady's time has expired. Movement will continue for liberation until every single gentle lady's time has expired. Has the right Ge to live in liberty. Gentleman from Maryland is recognized. We reserve. Reserves, gentleman from uh, Georgia. I reserve. Reserves, gentleman from Maryland is recognized. I give one minute to the distinguished gentleman from Colorado, Mr. Buck. Gentleman, gentleman from for Colorado yielding. is recognized for one minute. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, on October 7th, Hamas terrorists paraglided into a music festival and began an unprovoked spree of violence. Babies were beheaded, young girls raped, hundreds kidnapped, and many murdered in vile ways. To compare a modern democracy with a repressive terrorist state is wrong. But it is also wrong for Congress to take this action at a time when we have serious issues that we face, to take an action and take down the words, to strike the words, to censure a um, fellow member, no matter how incorrect we believe she may be, is wrong. We lower ourselves when we try to take action against someone else for their words. We all go back to our districts, and thank goodness social media hasn't caught every one of us with everything that we say back in our districts because we would all be standing here. This is a wrong time to do this. It is the wrong action to take. Let's pass a resolution condemning this kind of language, condemning anti-Semitism on college campuses and elsewhere. But it is absolutely wrong to, to vote for this motion. And I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Mm. Gentleman from Maryland reserves. We reserve. Gentleman from Georgia reserves. Reserve. reserve. Are you done? How much time? We're, we're, we're prepared to close, Mr. Speaker. Okay, gentleman from Maryland has a one minute. Gentleman from Georgia has a minute and a half. Gentleman from Maryland is recognized. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, I don't think that my colleagues have caught us in any kind of contradiction when they raised the case of uh, Representative Gosar, who posted a video on social media depicting himself killing our colleague, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and also attacking President Biden. These, this was a true threat. These were fighting words, and this is something that's totally within our First Amendment tradition. Mr. Speaker, we live in a time of terror and war, great polarization and trauma across the world. We must grapple the rule of law to our souls with hoops of steel at this moment in a time of all kinds of storms all over the world. The rule of law, the Constitution, is our shore, and now is a moment to hug the shore. Let's defend the freedom of speech for today, for tomorrow, and going forward in the Congress of the United States. Thank you, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Um, Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to insert this article from 11 Live News titled, Metro Atlanta woman killed in Jerusalem report stated November 6, 2023. Without objection. Thank you. I know there's a lot of passion today, or a lot of screaming, a lot of accusations, you could say on both sides. I don't really care what race, religion, gender, orientation you are. Where I come from in the Marine Corps, where I come from in the Marine Corps, we're all shades of green, we all bleed red. That's the truth. I just care about the person who has my back. When I was student body president at Morehouse School of Medicine, I was elected by my peers. 60% females, 80% black, 95% liberal. 
Why? Because I love people. I love people of all sorts. This isn't about who you are, it's about what you represent. What this body represents. That's what this debate is about. If this is not worthy of censure, I don't know what is. Representative Tlaib has stoked anti-Semitism in this nation and undermined our national security. I ask my colleagues to support this resolution to show the world, especially our adversaries, that the United States stands behind our allies and will not back down to terrorists. With that, I yield the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back.